Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and I was thinking the other day about what I would do if I had to start over my entire firearms journey right now. If I had to start with zero guns, what would I buy first, and how would I progress from there, especially with an emphasis on preparedness? And that's something that I wanted to share with everybody, because early on in my firearms journey, I made a lot of mistakes, and I bought stuff that wasn't sensible and didn't really help me get any further prepared. So I thought maybe by sharing this information, it would help you make better decisions down the road that I could have benefited from as well, okay? Now, I'm not some kind of firearms expert or anything like that, but it's just something that I enjoy and I think that it is relevant to preparedness, especially when we're talking about remaining on a budget. You don't want to waste money and waste funds on things that aren't actually accomplishing what it is you're trying to do. So. The very first gun I would buy, if I had to start over, let's say I'm either a brand new gun owner and I haven't bought anything yet, or maybe I lost everything in a house fire and I have to restart the collection, right? The very first gun I would buy is going to be a handgun, and I think that's the most obvious one. And I would buy something that isn't too large, but is still capable of being in the realm of like a duty pistol. So something that's not too small either. You don't necessarily want a pocket gun, but you do want the ability to conceal it. And why I say that is because generally with a handgun, you're gonna have it with you more often than any other firearm you can possibly think of because you can actually carry it on your body hands-free and you can hide it in case you need to conceal it or if you're trying to legally conceal carry or whatever it is. And in general, you're gonna find yourself using a handgun more often than any other firearm for self-defense scenarios. Not to mention, it's much easier to go out and train with handguns when it comes to indoor ranges and the typical ranges people have access to. Um, so I would start with a good high quality handgun. And this is a SIG P365X Macro. This is a 17 round capacity slimline firearm. It's basically a micro nine millimeter that allows you to carry it very easily, but when needed, you can still shoot it very comfortably because it has a full-size grip, 17 round magazine, like I said, uh, allows you to put a light on it, you can put an optic on it, so it kind of gives you everything you would want out of a larger size duty pistol, but with the ability to carry it more comfortably and conceal it. And even in an SHTF scenario, especially in like some sort of transitionary period, you're likely going to have your handgun on you before going overt with some type of a rifle or a long gun, right? So honestly, if I was gonna start everything over, the very first gun I would buy is a nice concealable handgun, most likely a double stack nine millimeter pistol because nine millimeter is relatively affordable. You'll get out to the range more, you'll train more, and you'll learn more with it. And you can use it for self-defense in a multitude of different scenarios, including home defense, which, some of the pocket guns aren't necessarily very good at in regards to something like a Ruger LCP, where maybe it's in 380, so you have less ballistics mixed with a very limited magazine capacity, and you can't hold on to the grip very well. So there's a lot of reasons why this would be a better option, or something similar to this, like a Glock 19, or maybe a SIG M18, or something along those lines, even like an MMP Compact from Smith & Wesson. Whatever it is, as long as you get a handgun that's serviceable and can actually provide you with the level of protection you're looking for. That's the first thing I would buy. And personally, right now, if I were to buy one, it would actually be a SIG P365X Macro because even though I really like my P320 and I like my Glock 45, this is so much easier to carry that I find that I have it on me more often than any of those other handguns, which means that even in a preparedness situation, there's a good chance I'll still have it on me. Not to mention it already has a 17 round capacity, so nothing wrong with that. Now, one thing that, I want to mention is the very first gun I ever bought was a Mossberg 590 Cruiser 12 gauge, right? Which means it was a 12 gauge shotgun with an 18.5 inch barrel and a pistol grip. So it was super impractical. And yes, it did the job. And of course, if I ever needed to use it for self-defense purposes, it would definitely take care of whatever was in front of it. But it wasn't the best option for being able to go out and practice with. It wasn't the best option for trying to do anything dynamic with. It just really wasn't a great gun in general. So Try to avoid those mistakes. And another thing you can do when it comes to handguns is you can get a very large handgun, like a Desert Eagle, right? Or something like that. Uh, my first handgun was a Smith & Wesson 686 Plus Pro Series, which has a five inch barrel. Awesome revolver, 357 Magnum, you can't go wrong. But it was way too big to conceal carry. And then when I finally got a concealed carry permit and I started wanting to actually learn defensive handgun use, I started to find out quickly that that revolver really wasn't gonna fit the role that I had hoped it would. So. Avoid getting anything too big or too small. Get into that duty size, double stack nine millimeter. Like I said, Glock 19 is really a good standard to kind of go, go by when it comes to like size and capability, and then just move on from there, okay? So hopefully that gives you some things to think about. Now, 
once I have that nice handgun that I, is reliable and I know I can use for self-defense and home defense and everything else, I'm going to move into something that's more utilitarian. Now, this is going to be controversial because on this channel I have often talked about the fact that I don't like how much emphasis is put on 22 long rifle in the preparedness community for SHTF style situations. Now, I've never said that it didn't have utility, and I've never said that it isn't worth having. All I was trying to say is that a lot of people will look at the 22 long rifle as being the only rifle you need, and depending on the situation or the environment and the level of danger that's presented by that environment, that might not be a good answer for you, right? And then you'll get anecdotal evidence from everybody's uncle and cousin about how they've shot a elk in the eye with it from 1200 yards away and dropped it in 0.4 seconds without having to track anything, right? So you'll get all that evidence as to why that's the only thing you need, but regardless of all of that, a 22 long rifle is a good utilitarian functional firearm to have for preparedness purposes and not just for hunting small game and things of that nature but mostly for practice and getting that time in and this more applies to those new gun owners out there so more so than losing all your firearms collection in a fire right if i'm a brand new gun owner and i just bought a handgun right so now i've got that squared away and it's of a defensive caliber it's not a 22 it's a nine millimeter or something greater but i would suggest nine millimeter for a lot of reasons either way now what's next well Everyone will probably assume it should be like an AR-15 for a lot of reasons, which makes sense. However, if you don't have any rifleman background, if you haven't shot rifles at all, you have no marksmanship in your background, learning those fundamentals on something that's much easier to learn on is going to help you greatly once you graduate to that next level. And that's what I've found with the Ruger 1022. So that's why you see that right here staged behind me on the back of this truck, right? And Go ahead just to kind of show you here but this is a rimfire 22 long rifle and it is a 16 inch barrel that is very inexpensive and one thing that i like about ruger 1022s is that when i bought this it was 200 dollars and that's before i put it into a new stock and before it had the optic on it or the bipod but bare bones from the store it was like 200 bucks now i think the same exact model which is just their standard ruger 1022 carbine model is like 300 bucks okay so still very affordable for something that's tried and true and reliable to a degree as long as you maintain it properly so Ruger 1022 would probably be the second gun I would buy, even though I've harped on 22 long rifle for so long and so often, but for reasons that are outside of the realm of just building fundamentals and building a firearms collection on your journey towards preparedness, right? It's hard to argue the utilitarian aspect of 22. It's hard to argue with the 1022 when it comes to logistics of being able to get aftermarket parts, magazines, and everything else. And it does have a track record of reliability. So yes, I use this rifle quite a bit around the property here, um, but I just wanted to dissuade people from assuming that you'll only ever need this rifle when it comes to kinetic involvement with maybe people who wish to do you harm, okay? So regardless, for the price, for the affordability of the ammunition, for the ability to practice and the ability to build those marksmanship fundamentals, the second gun I would get is a Ruger 1022. Now there's one way that we could possibly jump across this whole barrier and just kind of skip the 1022. And that would be more for those who were the ones who lost their firearm collection in a house fire, right? So not for the brand new gun owner. This is what I would suggest for a brand new gun owner who has no time behind a rifle at all, right? But if you lost everything in a fire, but you know how to shoot rifles and you've shot AR-15s and you know what you're doing, well, they do make conversion kits for an AR-15, CMMG makes them, and it turns your 5.56 rifle into a 22 long rifle caliber rifle, right? Which allows you to shoot 22 long rifle out of your AR-15, so you have the same manual controls, the ability to shoot those much less expensive rounds down range, and it still gives you all that same ability to practice and everything else. So there is that ability to skip to that next tier if you want without having to do the 1022 route. However, I still like the idea of having a dedicated 22 long rifle platform for reasons of reliability and dependability. Uh, and the fact that the 1022 is just something that pretty much every gun owner should probably have in their safe, right? Or at least like a Marlin Model 60 or something like that, right? All right, so. The third gun, because now that I've got my fundamentals down, I've got plenty of ammunition to practice with, and I can actually learn how to use iron sights and kind of get all of that basic stuff out of the way, the third gun I would buy, which is, this is not the order I went in originally, so trust me, I would have saved a lot of time, money, and effort if I would have done this correctly in the beginning, but the third gun I would buy would be an AR-15. Okay. And the reason for that is because now you're at a rifle caliber. Yes, it's an intermediate cartridge, 556223. Yeah, 
you could buy an AR-15, a 300 Blackout, or a lot of other calibers, six millimeter arc, 6.5 Grendel, whatever you want, right? That's not what I'm saying here. Get an AR-15 in 5.56 or 2.23, which is the, if it's in 5.56 or it's chambered for 5.56, it can shoot 2.23. If it's chambered for 223 Wild, it can shoot both of them as well. If it's chambered for just 223 Remington, I don't know why you even are getting that, but you're not supposed to shoot 556 out of that at that point. Hopefully that made sense. Anyway, get a 556 AR-15, okay? Because you can shoot 556 or 223 out of it. And now you have a rifle caliber that will allow you to reach out, hit targets, defend yourself properly. You have the same type of ammunition that's used by NATO and the military, which means that it's effective to a degree and it's also available logistically, right? Uh, and it is a much easier round to train on and learn how to be a rifleman in many ways because it has lower recoil, but it still reaches out five, 600 yards, no problem. Some loading, 77 grain OTMs, you know, you can reach out further with better ballistics and ballistic coefficients. But for the average person, a new gun owner, just getting a 5.56 AR-15 and then buying some cheap M193 or whatever cheap 223 you might want and getting on the range and actually using this and shooting it will teach you a lot and get you ready for actually protecting yourself. And then can still get other things done in the sense of utilitarian uses, like putting meat on the table. Yeah, 5.56, five, probably not the best choice for taking medium-sized games, but it can definitely be done. And it can definitely fill that role if you need to. Now, I do need to mention that the biggest supporter of the channel is Midway USA. And everything they do for me here on the channel helps me get better prepared, especially when it comes to getting out here on the range, being able to get rounds down range, practice, and acquire more gear and equipment for making sure that my firearms can provide me with the capabilities that I'm looking for. Well, Midway USA has helped a lot in that department. So a big thank you to them for making that possible and for supporting the preparedness community in general. Now, by getting an AR-15, you've now got your pistol, You've got your 1022 for utilitarian purposes and learning, and that 1022 taught you all of the fundamentals of marksmanship and shooting a rifle, and now you've upgraded to the next level of caliber and capability with your AR-15. So this is the third gun I would buy, and of course, all decked out like this is probably not gonna be the, the initial place you end up, but even if you just got something super basic with a front sight post and a carry handle so you could just have those iron sights and get going with it, go ahead and get started right? Or if you get a flat top and you just have a rail and you throw a red dot on there for, I mean, you can get decent ones at this point in time for, you know, $150, $200, right? Just go for it. And then you have just set yourself up for success when it comes to preparedness related just about anything, all right? That's the order I wish I would have bought my guns in. Nice handgun for self-defense and home defense. 1022 to get all those fundamentals down and have utilitarian purposes of pest control and whatever else. And then the AR-15 and 5.56 for self-defense. Let's just say advanced capabilities and logistics, okay? Not to mention the possibility of putting medium-sized game on the table or whatever else it is you might need to do. Now, once you start upgrading, it gets really expensive. So you're gonna spend a lot of money and you're gonna make your AR-15 super awesome. And then you're gonna say, well, what's next? Because you know now I got the itch and I kinda wanna scratch it and get another firearm. So the fourth gun I would pick up in this order, right, is gonna be where you start having more of a niche scenario. And here's the thing, I've got a rifle now that's capable of reaching out longer distances, definitely further than most hunting shots are made, and it's got a cartridge that's capable of taking, you know, deer-sized game, depending on what loading you're using. So I've got that capability at this point in time. And of course I can reach out and defend myself at further distances as well if need be. So the next gun I would buy at this point, right, for preparedness, right? This is not just like, hey, I wanna go dove hunting, what should I buy? Well, obviously an AR-15 first and then move on, right? No, this, we're talking about specifically if you're buying firearms with the idea of being prepared for dealing with whatever threats and trying to provide yourself with resources in the future. After the AR-15, okay? And yes, we can do this whole check thing if that's what you wanna do. It's, it's whatever, we're on the internet here. You're not gonna get shot, I promise, okay? at least by me. I don't know what else you got going on in your life. The fourth gun I'm going to pick up now is a 12 gauge shotgun. Okay. This is a Mossberg 500. This was one of their field models. It came with two barrels, 18.5 inch and a 28 inch vented rib barrel. And that's what's installed on it right now. 
Now this shotgun is set up for more of kind of like a home defense tactical kind of configuration because I took it with me when I was on vacation and I didn't have the ability to bring some of my more fun defense oriented firearms with me. So yeah, I've got a pick rail on here. I've got a streamlight flashlight on here, which is actually pretty good to be honest with you, streamlight racker. Um, but then, uh, uh, yeah, and I've got some S-Tac side settle cards right there. Either way, 12 gauge shotgun, tons of utility, bird hunting, 100%. I mean, large game, oh yeah. As long as you can hit it, you got a good optic or even just you're that good. Oh yeah, anything in North America, 12 gauge can handle. Uh, you need to breach a door, sure, go for it, right? I mean, the 12 gauge is ubiquitous with America. I don't know what else to say about it. And a Mossberg 500, at least in my opinion, at this point in time, buying brand new was is a better option than a Remington 870 just because of all the turmoil that Remington has gone through as a company. Mossberg still has high quality, quality control, right? And they also make sure that their products work and can provide you with what they're intended for. So I like Mossberg, that would be my suggestion, but a 12 gauge shotgun, 12 gauge is easy to come by. It's in all of your major stores. I mean, I get, I can buy 12 gauge at my gas station, right? That's just how universal it is. But at the same time, now I have access to shooting birds. I have access to breaching doors. I have access to a lot of other very utilitarian things. Not to mention you can change out the barrels on this. You can change the stocks on it. You can make it shorter, longer, whatever it is you need it to do. And that 12 gauge loading gives you everything from bird shot, buck shot, turkey loads, goose shot, BB shot. You can put dragon's breath. You can put slugs, whatever it is you want. And you can curtail the ammunition choice to whatever specific reason you need it for. Uh, and throw it in the gun and make it happen, right? So 12 gauge would be the fourth gun I would buy. Now, obviously, look, if your goal is to go out and do skeet shooting, then you're, you're just gonna get a 12 gauge shotgun probably right off the bat. But I'm talking about specifically for preparedness purposes, what order would I have bought my guns in? Like I told you before, the very first gun I ever bought was a Mossberg 590. It was not meant for hunting. It was not meant for really anything other than looking cool. And uh, I just didn't know anything about anything at the time when I bought it. So I wasted money buying that shotgun when I could have had something a lot more practical and capable. And instead, that's what I ended up with. So that's why I'm having this conversation with everybody, because I honestly think that this is the order I would have done better for myself in. And then I would have had access to all those capabilities in a tiered way that still made sense up until the point where you don't have to cover those bases anymore. Okay. So after the 12 gauge, what's the last thing that I would put on this list of, you know, getting all my bases covered and then moving towards whatever I want to get then, right? Like let's just buy whatever you want after this, but for preparedness purposes, trying to make sure you have a little bit of everything you want and then what order to get them in. Well, now that I have that more niche utilitarian function out of the way, the next thing I would get, and gee, do you guys, you guys, you guys don't care, right? I'm just making sure, but that sound feels good, right? The next thing I'm gonna pull out, and the next thing I would suggest, is then you're gonna niche down and have some type of long range rifle capability. And the only reason I say that is because having like a, it doesn't have to be bolt action. It can be gas operated. There's plenty of AR-10s and you know SCAR-17 and everything else that's out there right now in 308 or 65 Creedmoor that can do the same job as a bolt action relatively anyway. Right? We're not talking about precision long range shooting necessarily. We're just talking about being able to reach out further than your average distances at what the 556 rifle can handle and having that magnification that allows you to see what it is you're trying to look for much further, right? So this is where we're niching down finally. So we got all our bases covered on everything else. And then we pull out a 308. This is a American, uh, a Ruger American Predator in 308, which means it has kind of a heavy contour barrel and it's only an 18 inch barrel, which is kind of interesting for a bolt action. But this thing runs for no problem at all. And this is a budget rifle. I mean, you can get a Ruger American Predator in 308 for like 450 bucks, brand new. Like these are good rifles for how cheap they are. And they're not cheap, they're inexpensive. Sorry, I misspoke there. But the reason I would say that this is the fifth thing I would buy is because now you have something that you can go out and take deer with without having to question whether or not you're going to be able to uh, drop the deer as quickly as you would like. You can go out and elk hunt, hunt just about anything in North America with a 308. You can also reach out much further when it comes to some sort of defensive scenario in a SHDF event, right? So this will get you out to a thousand yards much easier than the 5.56 ever could, right? And you still have access to plenty of ammunition if you choose a NATO style caliber like 308 Winchester, which in NATO terms is 7.62 by 51. And of course, 
The loadings are slightly different, but in general, you can shoot both cartridges out of your 308. So that's where I would end up on because now you're at advanced marksmanship level you've already had experience with your 1022 you got to experience your 556 now and now you have a much larger cartridge that has all of the negative compromises that a larger car cartridge brings with it right so more recoil and having to work on that flinch once again okay okay <laughs> but regardless this adds a little bit of that extra capability to the mix right a much longer shot is now more reasonable to make. Uh, what it will do once it reaches its target is a lot more capable. And you also have the ability to have a, I guess, let's just say a designated way to make sure that anything you have to reach out that far for is going to understand that it no longer is gonna do what it wanted to do to begin with. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna leave that there and just let that be something you can ponder on. Either way, that's the order I would have bought these firearms in. And look, this is really inexpensive, so it makes you feel like, well, man, if I can get that Ruger American Predator for 450 bucks, and that AR is, you know, for a decent one, might be $900,000, like, I almost just wanna get the bolt action first, right? And I understand that, especially if your goal is to go deer hunting. But if we're talking about just for preparedness purposes, that AR-15 can technically hunt deer right? Not to mention, you could just get a different upper for it and throw a 6.5 Grendel upper on it, and now you can definitely hunt deer, or a 6 millimeter arc upper on it and definitely hunt deer, or even 300 Blackout. You can now more easily hunt medium-sized game with certain sub supersonic loadings, right? So the AR-15 really still covers all those bases, but now we're talking longer range with more energy on target once it reaches it, which means that capability becomes more reasonable to actually access, all right? And that's the order I would do things in now if I would redo everything once again. And that's just my opinion. But honestly, I wasted so much money and bought so many impractical things in the beginning because I just really wasn't sure what it was I was trying to accomplish or what even these firearms brought to the table in the sense of capability. And now that I'm aware, well, now I can make better decisions as to whether or not, you know, the money is worth spending for that capability or for that base to be covered. And if you're just starting out, this might be a good route for you to take, but everybody's situation's slightly different. So not everybody's gonna have the same exact needs or environment or anything like that. So, you know, you do have to try to cater to your specific needs. But I mean, when you're just starting out, nobody's telling you that either. You're just trying to go off of what makes the most sense to you in your head. And honestly, I can just say this, from personal experience that a lot of what you're thinking is probably dumb because that's what I was doing in the early days of my firearms journey, making a lot of dumb decisions. So, <laughs> and you know, one more time, just for all the people out there who just like to make sure, that, I don't know what that, I don't know what we're doing with that, but I think it's just trying to promote good habits, but either way, that's the, the route I wish I would have taken in the beginning. Would have saved me money, saved me time, given me more capability. Man, you know how much more time I would have spent on an AR-15 and learning that manual of arms and getting efficient with an AR if I would have had that as my third gun I ever bought? I would have been way better at it. And of course, at the time I lived in California, so everything was very neutered, but there were still ways to make things work. And that was not the third firearm I owned. So had I gone back, I'd probably be a much more proficient shooter at this point in time. I probably would have wasted a lot less money and uh, <laughs> I'd be a lot more ready for whatever scenario is coming our way that is likely coming our way. So let me know if you have any questions for me. Leave comments down below. Uh, there are things that we, you know, try to discuss if you want to check out the subscribe star page. It's five bucks a month. Uh, I definitely have preparedness incentives over there. I send out things like morale patches and stuff like that. It's kind of just fun, but it's five bucks a month. It's for having like a close knit network that helps to support the channel. And I don't know, help me pay for ammunition because it's not cheap and man, I've been shooting a lot lately. Uh, but that's just something we do over there. Uh, and then if you need anything else from me, go to magicprepper.com. And besides that, it's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.